Good morning everybody, welcome back to episode, I don't even know, episode three maybe, of our Living on Gilly mini-series. Today, I'm gonna answer a question that you may or may not have, but if you watch our series and then decide you wanna stay here for a while, then you'll definitely have. And that is, where, where on earth, or how on earth, do you do your shopping? Because the island only really has the capacity to grow a few bananas and a few coconuts. So, how and what's the best way, uh, and is there even a supermarket to do all of your shopping? So, the time is five to nine, and Basically, we're gonna hop on our bike, we're gonna cycle down to the front, and then we're just gonna show you the best way to do pretty much all of your shop shopping, whatever it is that you need, because also this is a tourist island and there is certain shops that are more expensive or less expensive. Basically, what is the most economical way? What's gonna give you the most variety of choice? Also, other ways to do shopping that isn't just through a shop. So, let's get some money and let's go. Make, oh, but, if you've got a bag, make sure you bring it. I think we might take the rucksack. But yeah, let's go. Let's go do it. Because we've got no food for breakfast. Oh, thank you, Lucky. Morning stroll to the shop. Look at the colour of that place. Okay, so let's begin with the types of shops. So we have the market, the supermarkets, the local convenience stores, and then the tourist convenience stores, and then local family stores. So the market. This is where people from Lombok come over every day and they sell their produce on the island. Naturally, it's a morning thing. So just, if you're gonna go, you need to make sure you get there relatively early. So as I said, we left about nine o'clock and boats were only starting to arrive then. So you don't need to go too early, but it's probably somewhere between between 9 and 11 is going to be your best bet because anywhere after 1 they're going to be start selling out and packing up and going back. So as I said this is going to be where all of the, the fresh produce is going to be. So you're going to be able to get your fruits and your vegetables, you're going to be able to get your meat and your fish, dried goods like peanuts, some noodles, some rice, occasionally they'll have the little local desserts. In terms of the meat and the fish, I personally have never bought from there. It comes over in buckets or uh, bags and then obviously there's no means of refrigeration. Now I'm sure that's what every, especially where we've been eating, the barangs, I'm sure that's what they use to cook but I just don't trust myself handling that. I just don't fancy chancing it. I personally haven't tried that. I just stick to the tofu. So yeah that's going to be the probably the cheapest place to shop but it's strictly for like grocery shopping. So then we move on to the supermarkets. So there's two supermarkets and they basically by principle sell the same things or are the same idea so there's one that is on the market road and that is going to be where like our go-to for if we've missed the market or if the market has sold out or they haven't had a good delivery and the one by the market is the one that you're going to have probably more choice for your fruit and your vegetables whereas the other one the thing that determines the difference in the two of them the other one sells more more specifics like baking soda or self-raising flour or plain flour or or like baking ingredients, which is something a bit more niche or a bit more specific. Whereas both of them will sell cereal, rice, pasta, noodles, cleaning products like the sponge you use to wash up with or soaps or washing powders. They'll have minimal selection of toiletries, peanuts, raisins, all of like milk, yogurt, they both sell that, but we just opt usually for the market one. One, because it's closer and two, because it's a bit of a bigger store and you have 
a wider variety. Now one thing I have seen but didn't look into much depth is outside the other one which is next to the night market is that they have a small freezer outside which had things like frozen like frankfurt sausages and like some other frozen meat. I didn't really look into it in too much detail but that might be a place to go and have a look at if that's what you need or that's what you fancy. So then we're going to move on to convenience stores. So we have the two types of convenience stores. We've got the local convenience stores and then the tourist convenience stores. So the tourist convenience stores are going to be more like your mini mart 7-eleven kind of idea however they're not branded like that they're called gilly mart maybe they're going to be like the glass fronted air conditioned shops and in there you're going to find things like crisps and pot noodle and drinks a small selection of toiletries and in some of them alcohol like bintang and things but not spirits there's like specific shops that sell like spirits and wines and things like that so that's going to be the touristy ones and the main difference between the touristy ones and the local ones is the touristy ones are usually a bit more expensive and they're going to be on those like main roads of the island so on the sunset side and on the main road by the harbour so then the local ones are going to be ones that like don't have air conditioning they don't have a glass front and it's just kind of everything's on a shelf. Now, usually if you go in, there will be prices labeled onto things. And these are usually like that little bit cheaper. So if we're talking about say, if you want packets of instant noodles, if you go to a touristy one, they're gonna be upwards of 5,000. Whereas if you go to a local one, they're gonna be around 3,000. And usually I find that in the local ones, they've got a bit more of a wide variety of choice. But either way, you're gonna get a similar thing and in each of them, in both of them, the toiletries, you'll, you will find like one or two face creams and one or two face washes and you'll find sun cream in both and you'll find um, like insect repellent in both. But the local one is gonna have more household products like dustpan and brushes, like the incense you used to burn to get rid of mosquitoes, like bug spray, like bin bag, all of those, those things you're gonna have probably more in the local one. For all of these shops that I'm talking about, I will leave Google Maps locations below, specifically our favorite ones and maybe what we might buy from those. So then this moves on to our last of the shop kind, and that is the small local stores. So like the one where we go to get our laundry done, they'll usually have like a laundry attached or a rung attached or they might just be a standalone stool. It's a bit hit and miss, see how it'll be priced. Well, they are convenient, so they may have like a slightly higher price. So for example, if I buy dragon fruit from the market, I'm gonna to expect to pay 35,000 per kilo, but from the lady down the road, it's 40,000 per kilo. And also some of them do depend on who's even serving you as to whether they're gonna charge you a higher price or not. There is a few of these dotted around and I specifically use the fruit lady at the end of the road quite often to get our fruit and that's where I go to get our laundry anyway. Moving on to the more specialised and luxury goods. So bread might be a funny thing or might not be something that springs springs to your mind immediately. You can buy loaves of like sliced white bread in both supermarkets, occasionally at the markets and occasionally at convenience stores. Bread is not a staple in Asian people's diets, obviously like a lot of it is rice. So that bread, I'm not a bread connoisseur, I'm not somebody who eats bread on the regular, but I do like it. Usually at home it would be like granary bread or sourdough or something, but we got this white bread and I toasted it and it literally turned to plastic and it was more like eating candy floss than it was like eating bread. It was so sugary. Not that I have anything against sugar. It was just very, it just wasn't nice. It just wasn't enjoyable to eat. So the luxury of having like proper bread. There are a few places you can get bread. I've seen it advertised in Caillou Cafe and also at the La Boulangerie. Um, but our favorite place to get it from is Nico's Bakery. So they have a shop on Gilly Terangan, but the main like bakery is on Lombok. So as far as I'm aware, through my experience, all of their bread is shipped over frozen and then like defrosted to either like collect slash order. And then if there's anything specific from the menu that you like, for example, we've been wanting to get the pumpernickel, but each time it's been out of stock, if there is something specific, you can give them a few days notice and they will get that shipped over for you. So I will leave their WhatsApp details below and you just give them a message. And I think the delivery is free to your villa, but each time we've gone to pick it up, just as that's like it's usually coincided with a day that we'll go to the market. As far as like anything else specialized, which the only thing I can think of would be like if you wanted a specific face wash or if you needed something in bulk 
bulk order or if you needed like a mosquito net like if you were probably like moving in or whatever it is my go-to would be to check the facebook page for the island which i'll leave a link down below as well and on there people are selling or talking about or you can ask a question and somebody will have the answer to your question as to how you can either get that or if somebody already has one etc or if you're like renting a villa off of some off of a company then you can usually join on their order their shipment that's going to come over and they can get that brought onto the island for you if you were here for a long period of time and you fancy going shopping there is a local ferry that literally takes like 15 to 20 minutes to the mainland and you can go and do all the shopping that you need to then bring it here so i hope this answers all of your questions that you may have about like long term living on the island we have not gone without like there is nothing that we need or want that we don't that we can't get our hands on if that makes sense like um it's it's very simple it's very nice you don't have to worry yeah there's just it's just it's very easy there's nothing here the only things i probably would say is indonesia in general is <laughs> just bring tampons because they are expensive and hard to get hold of they are yeah they are quite difficult and expensive to get hold of and also in terms of sun cream we actually haven't bought any but the insect repellent was reasonably priced so as long as you go to like the local convenience stores i'm going to imagine that things like that are like a sensible price anyway yeah that's kind of all i've got i hope this is helpful and if you do have any questions just let me know down below and i will make sure to answer them um and that is everything for this video and we will see you in the next one